So in the last videos, we were talking about semiconductor physics, and we've been building up to the point where we finally get to analyze devices that are commonly used uh, to create transistors and essentially everything we know that it's, that's electronic. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the PN junction. And I'm going to be introducing it, uh, why we're studying it, uh, how exactly it forms, and how we analyze it. So uh, first of all, why are we studying PN junctions? Well, we've, we've studied N-type semiconductor material. Uh, and we've studied P-type semiconductor material. But by themselves, they're not that interesting, right? They've, they've got a certain conductivity. They've got a certain electron mobility. Um, we can apply voltages and a current will flow, uh, but that's not terribly interesting. That doesn't let us do very much. Uh, we could get the same thing with a piece of metal. Um, so the PN junction is the first device that allows us to use uh, the unique properties of semiconductors uh, to actually create something useful. So a PN junction is the first such useful type of device. And I'm gonna actually switch around the ordering of these junctions or these uh, materials so that I'm less confused by it. Uh, so on the left, we've got this P-type material. And on the right, we're gonna say that we just stick uh, an N-type semiconductor right up next to it. So at this interface, they're touching uh, the P-type and the N-type semiconductor. And remember in the P-type semiconductor, uh, we've got a bunch of positively charged holes floating around. And my notation is to use unbound charges. Unbound charges have no circle around them. Uh, bound charges have a circle around them. And then we've got a bunch of negatively charged uh, bound ions in this semiconductor, or a bunch of negatively charged acceptor uh, atoms. And and initially, each of these sides is neutral. So the p-type, there's no net charge inside. The number of holes exactly balances out the number of acceptors. And in the n-type material, we've got a bunch of free electrons floating around. And for me, I don't know why, but negative charges feel blue. Uh, maybe I've got a bit of synesthesia. Um, and positively charged ions, or donors, uh, because they're donating an electron, are also sitting in the lattice. So if we, uh, if we push these two together, uh, these ions uh, cannot move. Uh, but we know that the electrons can, and we know that the electrons are moving and the holes are moving. In fact, they've got a thermal velocity of something like 10 to the seven centimeters per second. So they're moving really, really fast. They might be moving this way or that way or that way. Uh, but since they are moving, they're going to be able to move into the p-type region. So initially, the p-type region had no electrons or very, very few electrons. But some of these electrons are going to make it over to this side. And similarly, some of these holes are going to make it over to this side. They're going to diffuse because um, they, they don't want to stay in their confined area anymore because they've got so much more, uh, so many more places to go. That's, that's just basic diffusion. So, if we take the semiconductor, now it's just one big PN block. I'm just going to abbreviate this as P and abbreviate this as N. Uh, we know after a certain while, well, the ions didn't move. They're still just sitting around in the lattice. So the P-type semiconductor still has its acceptors, and the N-type material still has its donors, which are positively charged. So they're sitting just like they were before. But now some of the electrons have made it over to the P side, and some of the holes have made it over to the N side. And there's still a bunch of holes over here on the P side, uh, and a bunch of electrons over here on the N side. But there's less than there were before. And so since there's fewer electrons in a lower concentration of electrons than there was initially, uh, then this side, this N side, is going to have a net charge. In fact, it's going to have a net positive charge, the N side, which was previously charge neutral. And the P side, similarly, is going to have a net negative charge. So 
altogether, the PN junction is still charge neutral. We haven't created or destroyed any electrons or holes. Um, but the net charge on each individual side is different. And since there's going to be a positive charge over here and on the right side and a negative charge on the left side, we know that there's going to be an electric field between the two here. And we also know that in equilibrium, if we're interested in analyzing this device under equilibrium, uh, we know that there's no net movement uh, of charge. So we know that initially there were a bunch of electrons on the N side and they diffused over to the P side. There were a bunch of holes on the P side and they diffused over to the N side. But as more and more charges uh, accumulated on either side, this electric field starts to build up between the two. And this electric field, interestingly, is going to repel uh, these holes on the P side and it's gonna repel these electrons on the end side from the junction. So from the interface, uh, the diffusion of electrons and holes is causing these electrons and holes to be kind of pushed to the side. So if we redraw what we expect this to look like at equilibrium, uh, we don't expect anything to be, uh, we don't expect any net movement. Uh, so electrons and holes are still gonna be moving around, but there's no, no total charge movement between the two sides. So there's going to be still our ions, because we remember ions cannot move. And well, eh, for now they can't move. Uh, and we've got a bunch of positively charged ions on the inside. But we know since there's a large electric field that's built up in this PN junction, we know that the mobile holes uh, are kind of going to be shoved to the periphery of this device. And similarly, the mobile electrons on the end side are gonna be shoved to the periphery. And here, I haven't drawn the holes that have come over to the end side because we're assuming that there's a uh, few enough holes that it didn't appreciably change the concentration of the electrons, uh, at least within this certain region. And so you see that this repulsion of charges has caused uh, this region here to be free of mobile charge. And that's interesting. Uh, and we call this the depletion region. Uh, you might also hear it uh, called the space charge region uh, as well. And so this, this depletion region has a large electric field inside it. And it's also got it's not got a net charge, but it does have a bunch of negative charges on the P side and a bunch of positive charges on the N side. So what was initially just a uniform, uninteresting semiconductor, when we put a P and an N type material together, it creates this PN junction. And in the next video, we're going to analyze the PN junction with band diagrams, and we're gonna see why I've been why I've been harping on the fact that they are useful because they are incredibly powerful, especially in analyzing the PN junction. And so this picture, uh, this initially putting together two blocks of semiconductor material, having electrons diffused to one side and holes diffused to the other side, the buildup of this electric field, and then the creation of a depletion region, that's sort of the whole picture of the formation of a PN junction. And if you understand that, then you understand completely how PN junctions formed. And if you want to quantitatively an analyze it, uh, we'll need to apply the sledgehammers that we've, we've used to date in the continuity equation and the, our equations of state, as well as the band diagrams. So this depletion region, uh, it's also called the space charge region because if the holes try to go uh, towards the depletion region, well, there's a large electric field in here, so they're gonna be repelled and they're gonna be prevented from crossing over to the other side. Similarly, the electrons, when they try to go over, uh, there's a large electric field pushing them back. And so this uh, device, as you might expect, doesn't, uh, there, there's no exchange of charge in equilibrium between the two sides, or at least not very much. So it looks kind of like an insulator, uh, which is interesting. So in the next video, we're gonna analyze it with uh, band diagrams and I'm gonna show you 
uh, how we how we do that more generally for all sorts of devices.